Hey guys, so happy February. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of horses that I have in training right now, a couple of the older ones since last week was all about the youngsters. This is Regalia HVF. She is eight years old and um, <laughs> I say older horses, eight years old is still fairly young when you're talking about a dressage horse. Um, Regalia has been with me since she was a weanling, so it's kind of hard for me to think of her as an older horse as well. But she is one that um, is very talented and very opinionated all at the same time. So this week's vlog is kind of giving you examples of when things don't necessarily go according to plan what I do. Regalia is um, notorious for coming against the hand and against the aids. She doesn't like to be told what to do. So I have had to really make sure that my riding is highly sympathetic to her idea and that she understands that Everything that I'm doing, I'm not doing to her, I'm doing with her. And that just takes a lot of mental concentration from the rider because you go into each training day with, with a horse with um, specific thought process on where you want to take their session that day. That's what keeps you on track. You set short-term goals, you set long-term goals. So. My goal with Regalia is that this season we'll be able to go out third level. She has some really nice half passing starting um, and is working on the changes, getting them more submissive. Uh, and she is pretty much the same horse at home as she is out at the show. So that's one thing that she really has in her favor. I always know who I'm getting on when I'm getting on regalia. So, but the big thing with her is just being able to have a conversation with her about how I would like her body shape to be, how I would like her to move, or anytime I want to change anything, she gets very frustrated is her first response. Um, so, you know, everybody talks about a redheaded mare. And I joke around and I say this one really is one of my redheaded mares. Um, but I really enjoy her just because she um, is one that is completely honest with you. You cannot just fudge movements around with her. They're either going to be good or they're going to be just not good at all. So uh, she really has improved my riding and my tact while I'm riding, I think. Um, so today, when I was uh, working with her, I just was concentrating on transition and making sure that she um, is able to handle all of the different half halts, able to keep her pull up. She likes to get pretty low, um, almost like moving like a hunter. And so I have to think, you know, keeping the shoulders up, keeping the pull up, all of that stuff. Um, and the best way that I've found to do that is working in the trot with all of these different transitions that I'm doing. Uh, trot is definitely the gate that I am able to use more productively with her if I have a training issue. So because I know that I'm going to use that instead of, you know, just hammering on a better walk or a better canter, I'm going to utilize the trot to help her understand things. So you'll see she, um, when she comes against the aids, she she doesn't, you know, mince words about it. She's either with you or she's against you, which I can appreciate in my training. You know, that one, um, that halt before this last one you just saw was 
against my hand, but then, you know, she understands what she was meant to happen and um, tried a little bit harder. And that's one of the things that I love about her is when she really does understand, she will try her heart out for you. Um, Cantor is not necessarily the easiest gait for her. Um, it can get a little lateral feeling sometimes, like she gets a little locked up in her loin. So I have to really make sure that I utilize my inside seat bone and inside leg to really help her move her rib cage over and stay looser for me through the back. Um, so we're going to work on some changes here and uh, you'll see what I do when things don't necessarily go according to plan. Like right here, see there's a slip stain. One thing that I didn't do was goose her forward with the spur or anything. I just sat there and let it happen. Uh, with an opinionated horse, it's not my job to get into a fight with them. It's my job to learn how to effectively train them. And I know with her, if I had gotten on to her in that moment, it would not have been a good thing. So, I just patiently wait. And I make sure that I think through each transition what needs to happen to make things a little bit easier for her. So, she definitely has a better left to right change than she does right to left. You couldn't tell just then, but that was the first change that I asked for that day and she probably wasn't thinking changes yet even though we had been doing the canterwalk transition. So there you see she kind of goes against my hand in the left change. Not uncommon but what I was proud of is that usually her right to left changes are quite a bit more expressive than that and I felt for her, that change was actually trying to be submissive and on my aid, so I don't mind that. It wasn't perfect, um, and I know that. I knew it when I was riding it, and I definitely know it when I saw it, um, but I accept it because I know that she's trying. Um, here's a much better change to the right. And so I know that's her better change, and I do another transition. Um, here's a little bit of Reagan Bogan. She was feeling a little strong that day as well. And when she gets strong, she tends to um, curl behind the vertical a little bit. I still have to really maintain um, a very steady connection with her to talk her into popping back out and taking my hand forward and keeping the pole up, especially when she gets a little big here in these changes. You'll see she comes behind the vertical there, and I'm just going to really have to work to try and keep her out in front of my hand. But what I don't do is just keep going. Like I know she's being strong that day, so I keep things short and I give her breaks. I don't ever want her to feel like I'm just cramping her in my hand. Um, so I'm working with her pirouettes and experimenting with just getting a smaller canter, not necessarily sitting in the canter, but can she canter very small? And the reasoning behind that is when she makes a mistake in the show arena, I want to be able to pick up just a small canter and rescue a pirouette if need be. So I'm testing to see if she will um, have any issue with that or if she can keep going. And I'm quite happy with this one right here, just how small it was able to be. So I will give her a break. Again, I don't keep pushing her in the movement. Um, here on the left, she's not quite as strong or as able to keep the left canter smaller. You notice it's still 
a little bit bigger than the right. That was a good try. Um, but as I try and make it a little bit smaller, you'll see in a few seconds, yeah, she breaks. She's not able to keep it. Now again, when it doesn't go perfect, I don't goose her with the spurs. I just simply reposition her and ask her to go again if she can't. Now Reagan is the type, I don't even really have to ask her to try again. She already knows that a mistake has been made. And so what I have to do with this horse is just sit very quietly and let her figure it out for herself. Because if she can think through the movement, like right there, if she can think through the correct answer and figure it out herself, it's a lot better. Now see when I drop that right rein to give her a pat there, how she dropped behind the vertical. Again, that's just an inconsistency in the connection. I have to be mindful of that even when I want to reward her. I have to come up with different ways that are more productive than disturbing the connection. And I should have thought of that when I was riding her. Uh, we do a little bit of half-pass work. Um, Half-pass has been a really easy type movement for her. Um, so again, I'm just seeing, can we go a little bit more sideways and a little smaller and still keep going forward without her quitting on the movement um, and without her getting too strong in my hand. Um, and ducking behind the vertical. So again, a lot of that is me. Uh, I will 100% admit that I need to be able to keep that connection more even for her. Now we're working towards um, being able to have the strength to build on that expression in the medium trot. She tends to get a little uh, worried um, I wouldn't call it frustrated with her. Like I, I would say Regalia tends to get frustrated in the medium. Uh, but Reagan gets a little worried if she feels like she's made a really big step. Like right here, she gets a little tense. You see that? And it's just because she starts to move so large that she's not quite sure how to respond to the half halt at the same time while she's moving so large. So. I have to just convince her that the half halt isn't there to stifle her movement, but it's there to help pick it up and to shape it productively. So I just want to give you guys a little uh, thought process on keeping your training light and positive, even if mistakes are made. So thanks for watching.